seconds, everybody. Five seconds. All right. Who managed to get their partner's email address? Who managed to get their partner's email address? Okay, I'd say that's a pretty much uh, scientific 90% uh, success rate, I would say. All right, um, so return to your partner and uh, see if you can get $20 out of them. <laughs> Go. Go on, try and get $20 out of me. Actually, I would. Yeah, um, yeah actually, that would be great. <laughs> no, I, no, I'd, I'd, I'd take. No, I'd totally just take the Starbucks uh, card if that's fine. <laughs> oh really? What? Uh, what do you do? Okay. So if I gave you 20 bucks, 20 bucks would go to Peter, what would that do? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so my 20 bucks could go quite a long way. If I had the cash, I would give it to you. I don't have twenty dollars cash, which kind of ruins the whole. I'm going there. I'm going. <laughs> All right. How did everybody do? Who managed to get twenty bucks out of their partner? They did. Did over here. Who managed to get 20 bucks out of their partner? Who tried? Who tried? Who tried? That is a great idea. I did not think about that when I was coming up with this activity, but. Well, we talked about Venmoing each other, and then we both happened to have cash, so we just traded the bill. But you had a conversation, didn't you? You had a conversation. Did you guys know each other before? Great. Well, you got to know each other. You had a conversation. You joked about it. You built a bit of a relationship didn't give each other, well, you gave each other 20 bucks, didn't we? But yeah, that's great, awesome. Ha what, what happened here? That's, that's not bad. So, so there was some kind of conversation provision of value, some kind of value exchange there. What happened here? I just, I don't have any money in general. <laughs> well, on him. So I gave him an online resource that he could donate later. Thank you. Yeah. I think we were talking about impact there, value over here, building the relationship there. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we uh, cover in this session um, that perhaps is not complete rocket science. There's going to be a lot of stuff um, that um, people know. Um, it's whether or not we actually do this sort of stuff. Um, certainly, I'm going to show you uh, a few testing techniques that we've been using with, uh, with certain clients in, in, in uh, marketing automation. And yes, marketing automation is the robot. There's not going to be a robot here. I'm not going to be training a robot. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but yes, um, automation is awesome because we save time, uh, we engage, uh, we convert more. Um, it's not... Uh, it's not the system, it's not the tool um, that's going to help us uh, to engage, inspire, and convert more. Um, a lot of what we try to focus on in uh, welcome series or nurturing series, whatever you want to call them, is um, conversion. Uh, conversion to become a donor um, at the end of the day. 
but there's so many things in between that that we need to do. Uh, we need to get to know each other, we need to provide impact, we need to inspire, we need to show a value exchange. There's a whole load of reasons why we use uh, Welcome Series um, and it's not just the tool uh, that's going to get us there. So micro action, strategy, thoughtful planning, a lot of testing, um, who, who set up Welcome Series and just, uh, there we go, it's done. We'll return to it in five years, never time. Yeah, it, 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 it absolutely happens. And this is a robot with no strategy or planning. That's what happens, you fall over. So yes, we're going to focus on the strategy um, for uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, onboarding series, welcome series, engagement series, nurturing series. We'll look at a bit of uh, data from um, the, uh, the corporate world uh, as well. Um, you'll notice that uh, uh, if you sign up for any kind of sales-driven website nowadays, uh, there's some pretty fantastic automated series that, uh, that are interacting with you there. Um, so there's, there's certainly some learnings we can, we can take from there. Um, and a lot of what we'll focus on when we look at case studies is for new subscribers, so that initial um, um, en entrance point. Um, certainly a lot of people join uh, by uh, straight away by becoming monthly donors, fantastic, uh, by becoming uh, one-time gift donors and upgrade from there. Um, most people are going to join uh, as activists, pledges, sign up on your website, that sort of thing. Uh, and we're going to look at uh, certain ways where we can test uh, and uh, move people up a bit from there um, with, with, with uh, strategy around content and welcome series. So, on the menu at lunchtime. Um, the bad news is, as I said, it's not lunchtime yet. You're going to have to listen to me uh, for a few minutes. Uh, we'll go through a bit of intros. Um, why do I need email addresses, very briefly? Um, why do we need to welcome and nurture? Uh, give you three big reasons to nurture and engage. Um, and then we're going to look at three case studies, different strategies for marketing automation uh, currently seen uh, in the world. Um, trying to really milk robot things here with a robot load of, t I don't know what a robot load would be, but a robot load of tips on, on what you could test. So each case study will show you some things that we're testing um, or that we have tested uh, before we wrap up. And then you may eat, and then we can eat. Um, so uh, this is uh, me. Um, I've spent the past 10 years learning, leading, training nonprofit sector. Um, I've purely been focused on digital um, since, since I moved into the sector about 10 years ago, uh, or just over 10 years ago. Um, some highlights, I've created the strategy and test plans for a lot of these nurturing email series over the past 10 years, especially over the past three, um, since uh, we've really started focusing on it. Um, plan and led complete technology overhaul for, for a large uh, uh, cross-Canada organisation. Uh, um, a really fun thing was I led, planned and trained uh, Greenpeace Mexico staff on mobile and email fundraising a, a number of years ago. That was, that was quite good fun. And this is us, so you can ask about us later. Do we even need email addresses? Anybody? Why would we need email addresses? Well, that's a great answer. Um, you can probably pass over this slide now because that's going <laughs> to... You saw this slide before. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, absolutely. <coughs> what, you know, why else would we need email addresses? Way to contact people. Great. We've just answered my first two bullet points there. Um, absolutely, yes, we do. Um, email is the primary source. Shall I use the word driver of online revenue for the majority of nonprofit organisations today? Lots and lots of other um, areas that we're seeing uh, revenue come from. But to your point, yes, email is still driving 
that revenue when we're going out to people, actively going out to people. Um, and to your point back there, um, I think you described it perfectly. Um, uh, next after consultancy, uh, testers, uh, great bloggers, um, provide some data on the value of multi-channel uh, donors or multi-channel uh, constituents. Offline donors can be up to 90% more valuable when you have the email address. Um, it's certainly what we see, um, and it's certainly um, a, a huge importance of, of having email addresses across the board, not just for online only, so looking to acquire your email addresses uh, around there. But none of that matters um, if we haven't actually brought them into the organization appropriately, if we haven't got to know each other, uh, if we haven't um, uh, even, even almost stewarded when we, when we gain their email address, uh, that type of thing. It's all the stuff that in the back of our minds we know we should be doing um, and there's plenty of organizations that are doing it really well, uh, possibly even uh, in, in the room today as well. Um, but yes, there's lots and lots of scenarios where um, uh, when it comes to welcoming, nurturing, we haven't really taken a deep dive into that content and looked at what are we trying to do, what are the goals of this. Is this, this, this in itself is a campaign to look at, what are we trying to do um, when, when we're nurturing people. So traditionally, um, obviously I'm going to skip a whole load of points here for mail and street and face to face, but traditionally um, we've acquired uh, donors uh, through the mail, uh, small gifts, we've hopefully done a bit of research on, on that data before we've gone out for acquisition. Um, and we're asking with the package, hoping to convince and convert. Over the phone, face-to-face, -face, street fundraising, we meet, we talk, we build relationships, um, although you know, it could be quite brief, uh, and, and we ask. Of course, we, you know, um, I'm sure we've, we've all experienced this. Um, the, the, the attrition rates, per se, in face-to-face -face, um, have not been fantastic, and, and maybe even growing over the years as well for particular organizations. Um, but again, perhaps that, that's something to do with how those monthly donors, those new donors, donors were uh, nurtured when they first joined the organization as well. Online, uh, we, we need to first find relatively interested audiences. This is if we're going out to uh, acquire email address uh, addresses, uh, convince them to give the first time. We need to get to know each other during it. We need to build that relationship. And I know I've repeated that a couple of times already. Um, there's various uh, um, data points that you can find on uh, why, why we use uh, welcome series or welcome messages. Um, um, but uh, th this one from Blue Hornet, uh, their email guide, uh, the welcome email guide. So 74% of uh, subscribers ex expect a welcome message. So. That's, um, that's speaking to purely just the, um, uh, the initial response. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll see some other data. This is, this is just data that we see uh, with, with our clients anyway. Anywhere between 40 and 80% open rates with, with your welcome messages um, is what we're getting. Does that sound out, out of whack or does that sound about similar? I think one thing that's important with that 40 to 80 percent that we'll look at in the case studies to bear in mind is you've just acquired these people. We, we, you compare those open rates to the rest of your open rates, uh, that they're engaged, they're opening your emails uh, right there and then, and yet welcome and nurture series seems to be the area that we're not focusing as much on our content when we're not, we're not thinking, uh, deep diving enough into what are the actions that we want people to take and what are the goals that we're looking to, to do. So three reasons to nurture and engage. Um, number one, to educate and inspire would make a lot of sense. Um, increase their investment time in you and, and for you with them. Uh, and uh, number three, to convince and convert. We all know that assumption is, what's, what's assumption? Does anybody know what assumption is? What was Larry doing? Why was he doing that? Anybody know what assumption is? 
<laughs> Were you just saying something about you and I there, or sorry? Um, it's sometimes said in different words, um, but it's the mother of all screw ups. Um, to completely assume, in this case, that somebody knows who you are, what you're going to talk about, what you're about, the impact that you have on the earth, animals, children, humans, everything. It's, it's not safe to assume that people are going to have any clue once they sign up um, what you're about. So um, to educate and inspire, um, that was a random gift there. And I, I think this is the last of them, so uh, you can rest assured. During email acquisition, uh, with a petition of pledge, um, you know, when we're going out with um, various tools, engaging networks, uh, we're using various services, care to, change, all those, those, those types of things. Um, they're connecting you with you on a value, values-based level. So uh, there's, they've, read a, they've read a statement, they've read that, you know, what, what you're looking to change or what you're looking to aspire to, you know, if it's more of a pledge action, what you're looking to aspire to. Um, and so there is a connection. You, you have connected. Um, on that values-based level, there's a there's a there's a shared connection between you and, and that person on who you're about and, and what they're about. But that's it. That's all they've done. Um, they haven't uh, they haven't invested much time, um, and their understanding is very very limited. So certainly, uh, we want to use um, welcome series and nurture series. Um, to answer a lot more questions about, about you as an organization, or, or not really you as an organization, but your, your impact and um, what you actually do, what you're actually striving to achieve, and all that sort of stuff. You're trying to level them up um, in each email that you send out um, through, through uh, an automated series. Um, so, uh, we certainly want to increase their investment time in you. Um, I thought this was uh, an interesting little bit of data from quite a large sample group um, on, a, on a posting from Next After from perhaps a year ago. Um, where, okay, we know that if someone's signing a petition or a pledge, it's, it's a really small amount of time. We've all signed petitions and pledges, I'm sure. Um, it doesn't really take us uh, much time. It's, it's certainly why we have nicknames for people being slacktivists or armchair activists, that type of thing, because it's really easy to do. It's really easy to do. Um, and then as we, as we uh, build up and we're asking people to do a whole lot more stuff, donor conversion rate goes up substantially in this, in this data set. But we also know that as we go up here, we're getting a lot less email addresses. So a thousand here could be five here. So it's you know we know the use of uh, these acquiring techniques. We understand that we can acquire a lot of email addresses. So therefore, if we're going to do this and try and maximise our our return from acquiring email addresses, then the nurturing series and 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 we'll look at uh, some other things that we've been doing as well. The nurturing series is looking to add this time investment, asking them to do a whole lot more during that series. So now you've got a captive audience and trying to ask them to do a whole lot uh, more along the way. And this is, this is uh, uh, the, the real rocket science uh, bit of everything, is um, increasing that time through micro actions. So um, when we're planning a nurturing series uh, for a client, um, a huge part of our brainstorm is what are all the things that people could possibly do to, uh, with, with this organization? What are all the things? List it all off. Could probably name you know, 30, 40, 50 things that you could come up with um, uh, that you could ask people to do. Probably not going to use 30, 40, or 50 things in here. That would be a bit confusing for people. Um, but certainly, you know, watch this video. Um, read this timely news article or, or, or blog post. That may require a bit of updating along the way, but read an article, read a, 
a, a, a paper or, 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 a, or an infographic that, that's been uh, created or, or released. Um, act, um, uh, you could ask people to uh, do something, change their cover photo, change their profile photo, um, share this pledge with five family or friends. Each thing along the way, we're just asking them to take little pieces of action uh, to get them more involved with the organisation um, uh, before we take them uh, or, or attempt to take them that, that extra step. So number three, uh, to convince and convert. So a real strong piece to know on that conversion is uh, we certainly don't take a short-term approach to, uh, to the conversion. A lot of the time, we're, if we're working on um, an, uh, a, uh, an acquisition um, campaign, um, the, uh, we or the organisation we're working with uh, may have a, a phone partner that they're working with um, that they would actually integrate with and, and phone people uh, for that initial attempt at conversion, um, something that obviously has been done for many, many years. Um, so with the nurturing series and any conversion that we're doing there, we're not looking for conversion, an absolute conversion in that, uh, in that series. We're looking at, uh, looking at that data over the next 12 to 18 months. We're looking to use that nurturing series to engage, to convince, to inspire, but to set those people up for what's going to come. So, yes, we're going to ask, we're absolutely going to ask, but we're doing that more of a setting of ex expectations. This is what's going to happen in the future. We're going to ask you for money because we need money. That's how we exist. That's how we can actually run our programs. And we have to add a whole load of context to that within this nurturing series. I suppose I didn't really speak to this. Um, this was uh, uh, an interesting study from Return Path. Two million subscribers from over uh, top, uh, from the top 100 retailers in the US showed 42% higher open rates than, than other emails uh, with, with, uh, with welcome series emails. So uh, we're reinforcing the point with uh, the idea that you have that captive audience. Uh, let's use it to educate, inspire, convince, and, uh, and convert. So these are the type of things that we can set expectations with. with uh, what's it going to take to make a change? What impact can a donation have? What do I need to give to have an impact? All these are things that we talk about internally all the time, um, that, that you back in your organisation probably talk about all the time internally. Um, always remembering when you've acquired that email address, um, the person themselves has not had those questions answered whatsoever. So it's almost like when we're thinking about websites um, and usability, we can't assume that people understand how to use things there. We can't, un we can't assume that um, people really, really get what you're about uh, enough to actually make a financial investment um, uh, in the organisation. So then we're building up that, that conversion piece. As I said, if it's a long tail approach, if we're looking at that data over a long period of time, that conversion piece is, uh, is built up throughout the series and it's setting the expectation that those appeals are coming uh, and uh, uh, they, they know that they will be um, asked in, in the future and obviously are going to receive more emails. So these are the three uh, recent case studies um, that I came up with. Um, one was an activist, an e-activist nurturing engagement series. Um, number two, a conditionalized welcome nurturing engagement series for new donors and new email subscribers. And the third was an e-activist engagement series uh, enhanced with uh, Facebook Messenger. So we're going to look at those. One thing I'll, I'll mention as well, just sitting in uh, Graham's intro and previous session, mentioned some really interesting things of things to come of um, around marketing automation. So uh, SMS um, integrated with marketing automation. Um, 
uh, trying to think of some other things uh, that he was uh, saying there. Um, even, even that deep dive into data, making the connection between uh, how people are uh, you know, connecting audiences with what they're interested within um, the emails themselves, all that kind of stuff is going to be very, very interesting when it comes to marketing automation because at this moment in time, uh, we're using uh, different types of actions, um, we're using surveys, we're tracking the data, we're looking at how they're performing and testing and updating over time, um, but certainly those types of things are going to add into the mix um, how, um, how effective your content can be to, to particular groups of people. And obviously the survey tool is going to be uh, very, very useful. So case study number one, uh, this is with War Child Canada. This is the one that doesn't have results um, at the moment. But uh, I thought it was a great example just from a content uh, perspective to show the types of things that you want to think about for those micro actions. Um, this in itself um, is a five-part email series um, looking to nurture uh, new activists that are acquired. Generally, they're using Care2 or Facebook is where they're really going. Um, I mean, is anybody using AdWords, AdWords grant for email acquisition at the moment? So it's, uh, you know, it, it's not the, the strongest at the moment, but depending on what your drivers are for, for search, um, we have one client where it, it works wonders, um, but, but not, for, not for everybody. So these, these guys are, with, uh, um, are acquiring generally through Facebook and Care2. We know that the audience may not be familiar with War Child as an organization, yet, again, we know that through the sign-up, um, wherever they're coming from, they do have that um, uh, connection on a, on a values-based level. So the four key objectives of the series um, is to um, uh, have a focused reason for being acquired, giving them an all-round picture of uh, the programs, Guiding activists through a journey of next step actions. Um, we're looking to form a closer bond with these people. We're trying to highlight and make that connection with the need for funds, all that kind of stuff. And then prepping activists for, for future emails, including fundraising appeals. So quite a lot to, to pack in. Uh, and you'll, you'll see uh, in case study number three how we can use another tool set as well to complement that. To, to even bring more of these micro actions. But in this case, it was those were the main things that we were trying to bring into this, this nurturing series. Another key thing, actually, that isn't mentioned in that previous slide is each um, the nurturing series was created so that it could be um, used for different acquisition campaigns. So we're switching up imagery, we're going to switch up the signatory, and we're going to switch up perhaps the opening um, of uh, emails one and two in, in the series to make a connection between how they or where they were acquired, um, making that more specific values connection um, on, on how they were acquired. So micro actions uh, one and two was watch a video, share a video. Uh, key message was the reinforcement of a community working together to create a world where no child knows war. Micro actions three and four, uh, we're asking people to share a picture, update their cover photo, tweet, uh, Instagram with these messages, this image, asking people to do small things all along the way. Key message, uh, key message to focus on was um, uh, in these uh, particular emails, this being email two and three uh, was a, uh, around a specific story of the impact of war, uh, Child Canada uh, supporters. So what you as a supporter has uh, can have an impact on. Um, another micro action that we, uh, we included was, um, or, or the, the final action that we included was the donate. We did include uh, all along the way um, uh, specific info on uh, impact within each email, apart from email one, when we're getting to know the person um, initially. Um, but certainly, uh, by the time we're in email five, uh, we're showing specific information on, on, on the impact. Because in their e-appeal series, in every single e-appeal series that they send out, 
they are providing that specific information and they are really, um, really focusing on um, the, the impact of what a donation is going to um, create. So we're, just, we're, we're essentially prepping people uh, for that. Um, you'll see in, in the other case studies, because this one doesn't have results yet, um, that we do convert quite a lot of people in these uh, nurturing series as well. But again, the goal is to look at conversion um, o over a 18-month um, period. This was the timing, and these were some additional uh, testing pieces that, that we were looking at. Um, so different signatories uh, for every single email uh, was something that we uh, uh, found interesting and, and hope to test with this one in the future. Um, that, in general, um, could be very useful. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, not everybody does this. A lot of organizations we work with um, send it just from the organization um, or just from one name, the CEO or the executive director or something like that. Um, the only thing that that's going to tie you to is the number of emails that you could possibly send out in a, in a given, given time frame. So over the course of a year, if you're sending out from one person, um, people are going to get very used to what that email is about um, uh, and who it is, and your open rates may stagnate and, and things like that. Mixing up the from name and the signatory itself, uh, we've seen some uh, good stuff in terms of open rates uh, for that. Um, design versus non-design for certain messages, um, strong PSs to donate, um, and remarketing uh, for activists uh, with imagery um, and creative that completely support all along the way uh, the, um, the, um, the email nurturing series. Case study number two. Um, we were using a lot more uh, conditionalization or the idea around conditionalization here. Um, the idea here was that the original welcome series was underperforming because it was too generic. Um, it was, it, it just really, really was. It was a very, it was one of those ones that had been just in there for, for a number of, of years. Um, so we were just looking for an improvement of that, A, a updating it, but B, how can we actually just conditionalize it based off of um, the animal preference that people actually, uh, the, the sort of animals that they, they actually like. Um, so this, this was uh, a simple flow chart of, of, of how we um, uh, went, went through that. Um, donor, non-donor, um, if they were an activist or, or something like that, uh, they're going down the different paths. They all end up in email two with a survey uh, email one with a survey that we're asking them to do, and actually, it's been updated since, where we we include the survey uh, a couple times, and there's a fourth email now, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, the point of the survey is to segment people uh, um, within the database, um, so that we can actually provide them with conditionalized content as we go along, uh, and again, marketing automation saving us a lot of time and effort um, over time. So collect the data, um, yes, I've got two minutes for the animals. Um, that's the micro action we're looking for engagement in this particular one. <coughs> but the micro action is actually going to help us with our conditionalization. And so it allows us to tell the right story with the right images. The emails themselves, um, um, apart from, I seem to remember a couple of them, were very, 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 very similar in terms of the copy, um, apart from the uh, imagery and the, uh, I think there was one paragraph based off of the sp specific type of animal that the person might be uh, interested in. Um, but the call to action, um, all that type of stuff would be different and we're, we're referencing the name of the animal um, throughout um, uh, whichever one they've, they've chosen. And again, uh, a real important factor here was the previous welcome series was not good. Um, it wasn't, it, it, it was, it, why, why we've seen or they've seen an increase um, uh, in, in donations from the previous welcome series is because the previous welcome series wasn't doing anything. Um, so we, we didn't have too much of a bar to, to, to surpass, which is great. Um, one thing that's happened over time is 
um, they've started asking, um, this is actually after we wrote and created all this, but they've started asking people to actually join um, to their DIY fundraising, Champions for Animals. Um, and so when they look at overall growth, we're not applying this to, um, or they're not applying this to the welcome series um, or the different welcome series that they now have in place that are all based off of uh, these ones. Um, but uh, getting people through their welcome series and nurturing series and activists and new donors to then sign up for their DIY fundraising has been um, quite a splendid success um, uh, on their end. Case study number three, um, this was a lead gen test uh, with uh, the UNHCR and uh, the Canadian fundraising marketing arm. Um, we wanted to see whether an automated stream of messages via Facebook Messenger to support the automated engagement and nurturing series of emails would actually enhance the engagement over time. So um, it was really interesting to hear that idea of using uh, SMS along the way, um, something automated within engaging networks. That would be great. Uh, um, maybe it's not SMS to donate, but SMS for those micro uh, uh, actions that we want people to take. In this particular example, um, and we'll see at the end, we're, we're testing in other areas as well. Um, we're using the Facebook Messenger bot that we've created to supplement the nurturing series to um, provide more actions, more up-to-date information uh, for people to take, but also um, to complement um, and, and reiterate what's been asked in, 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 in the nurturing series. So the four-part email series um, uh, was set up, written, planned for, all that kind of good stuff, um, and set up in, in the marketing automation module. Um, it was sent over a six-day period. So in terms of timing, um, uh, we uh, started working with organizations um, where we find out their welcome series is over six months' time. And so all these people are being excluded from appeals for, for that amount of time. Um, we're, we're certainly testing on different time frames uh, to do this. For this particular one, um, the acquisition test was based off of um, the ongoing crisis in Yemen. So the emails were going to be sent directly from the field, or directly from the field office in Yemen. So the, um, a couple of the uh, uh, field officers um, working there were signing off on the email copy because they were going to be the, the, the from uh, signatories and the from name in, in the emails themselves. Six days because we wanted to really, really encourage urgent action here. Whether that was a good idea or not, um, um, you know, I, I think we'd have to do some more testing with other uh, campaigns with them, but certainly um, six days seemed logical uh, to, uh, to increase the urgency of what we wanted people to do. Um, as I said, each email had a different signatory and send a name, <coughs> and then no emails contained design elements. So that idea about sending from the field, um, it made absolutely no sense if we were to uh, send a neatly designed email um, from someone who's in, from a field office in Yemen. Um, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. In the emails themselves, we were asking them to watch a video, share the video, forward the email, um, soft ask to donate, straight up ask to donate, impact statements, doing all those uh, reasons why we use the nurturing series. But we uh, sent 50% of uh, the Facebook pledge signers um, the email series and we sent uh, the other 50% audience in Facebook, um, so this was done, by the way, purely in, in, in Facebook. Uh, we sent them the email series plus a series of automated messages each day for about 14 days um, after. So this is just a brief on, on the flow. That's quite relatively straightforward. Um, and then this, this was the flow uh, using um, the Messenger bot that we had set up uh, using a WordPress plugin. 
So um, first we had to get people to interact with the bot. That's the one downside. Uh, we do have to get them to do that, but that wasn't too hard to do. Um, that was a yes, no uh, question based off of your interest in the Yemen crisis that you just clicked an add on. So that wasn't too hard to get them to actually interact with the bot. Once we had them interacting with the bot, uh, we could then send uh, bulk messages. So anybody who joined, we could actually send out bulk messages through the plugin. Um, and we were able to pre-write a narrative uh, for those bulk messages while still having someone there if people were to respond and ask for more detail and stuff like that. So the whole narrative was decided in accordance with the acquisition campaign, with the email series, everything was done at the same time, all the writing, all the strategy, the planning and the writing was all done at exactly the same time. Um, and this uh, provides uh, the example of um, how we're first uh, interacting uh, with people. Um, a key thing uh, was once they interacted with us, um, uh, whether they interacted us, uh, yes or no, um, we're certainly trying to get them to sign up to, <coughs> to, the, um, to the petition. So this petition was not in Facebook. We couldn't send them back to a Facebook lead gen form. We'd send them to uh, exactly the same, uh, not petition, but a pledge in engaging networks um, and have them sign up there. And you'll see the difference being you get um, o over, say, a two and a half week period um, uh, com uh, for straight up Facebook lead gen, that audience compared to <coughs> the audience who went through the message bot, um, the message bot was slower to acquire the email addresses. And these, these are the other types of messages we were sending through, through the bot and, and, and it carried on. Um, uh, we had a whole, whole script um, Lots of uh, ad hoc personal messages, uh, messages sent along the way as well. Um, we were able to send um, and just plan for the idea of different news stories that were appearing in the news at the time and put that, uh, load that into the bot before it, uh, before it went out. All that type of stuff, trying to make things as um, on at the time and relevant as possible. Um, but coinciding with all the micro actions that we're asking people to do within within the email, and because it's in Messenger, it was actually a bit easier to get people to do the sharing and, and, and that type of thing. This is what we saw: um, the automated Messenger messen messages received on average a 75% read rate, which is great. Um, we, you know, the SMS idea. Uh, connection to marketing automation really feeds into the idea that with Facebook Messenger uh, we're getting an interruption there in people's lives and days. Most people have notifications switched on even if it's just the badge icon uh, on, on, on uh, whatever app they're using, whatever device they're using. So we're really playing on the idea of interrupting people with this. Something that we're, you know, email been around for so many years now, we're not able to do as well and uh, completely interrupt people. So, so that was the, 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 the uh, if you go back to the hypothesis, the idea of what we were uh, looking at. We did see a higher conversion rate with uh, the non-people who went through the Facebook Messenger uh, stream, which was disappointing, but None of those people went through an end of year three or four email series uh, appeal, primarily because the acquisition was slower and we actually, uh, the client actually moved the media budget to just the Facebook bot um, acquisition. So we had all the eggs in that basket at the end and all of them were still going through um, a series of automated messages. We didn't include that group at all. Uh, um, in it, and of course the sample size isn't absolutely massive at the moment with, with this test. Um, we're looking to, to do a whole lot more. We did see a much higher average gift um, uh, for the, uh, the enhanced group compared to the, uh, the, the email only. Again, it's data that we're going to be looking at um, over the, the coming months. 
we learn that the interruption of messenger provides for a certain and higher read rate. We also know uh, our friends at Facebook, uh, things change over time. Legislation even changes in, in Canada uh, and, and the US. Um, but certainly at the moment, um, uh, once people are interacting with, uh, with your bot, uh, we're able to send them those broadcast messages and we're, into, we're able to interrupt their days, which um, could be quite handy. And we hope that carries on for uh, a little bit of time. Hence why the SMS uh, seems quite attractive as well. Um, most e-activists from the Messenger group will share the content on Facebook compared to those being asked to share via email. It's much simpler to do that we're seeing. Further Messenger group emails have converted since acquisition, which is great. Um, again, we're, we're still looking at that long tail conversion rate over a period of time. Uh, and actually we're testing this with uh, P2P event registrations um, with another client uh, to see um, over the period of um, um, uh, acquisition for uh, participants for a national walk um, up in Canada. Um, we're looking to see if uh, Messenger is going to improve those, not only, um, not only improve the registration rate, we're actually not as focused on that, uh, we're looking to use it to improve the amount that people raise on average and using Facebook Messenger to um, interrupt those people who are actually uh, fundraising on behalf of us. So that's about it. Um, assumption is the mother will screw up, so we want to uh, ensure that we bear that in mind. That's why we're, um, we're using uh, email nurture and welcome series. Um, we we know that they don't know much about you and we have to recognize that and think deeply about these series and actually plan for them um, right applicably if we can conditionalize work out all that kind of stuff it's very very much worth doing because it has an impact on all the other things that you do because all these people they could be your diy participants they could be your walk participants they could be your one-time gift donors your monthly donors so it impacts a lot how these people welcome and again, it's not rocket science to say that, I realize, because that's what we do in other places in fundraising. So we want to bring that uh, into Welcome Series. Um, educate, convince, inspire your readers. You want to engage through the use of different micro-actions um, and help your reader to understand what it will take. Um, and perhaps a messenger bot or even the idea of uh, throwing SMS into that mix could be the answer to cutting through that clutter. That's about it. I, I, I know that Ben kept walking in showing me times there. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we can get some questions. I'll be out there as well and I've got a couple of team members there as well. So the nice thing with the uh, message bot was that was directly through a WordPress plugin. So we didn't have to have an interaction between engaging networks. We, for the email welcome series, we had to have people sign that pledge for sure um, because there was always going to be two groups of people there. There were going to be people who... Um, so the data we showed were people who um, interacted with the bot and signed the, the, the pledge on engaging networks so that um, we captured that data in engaging networks for the, for the email series and future appeals. Um, so the flow was click an ad, so that ad would usually go to a Facebook lead gen form. Yeah. Rather than uh, going to that, it would actually load up Messenger and the bot would actually start asking those first questions. And all you had to do was interact. Yeah, exactly. Based off the initial reaction, the messaging would be slightly different. Um, not many people said, no, I've clicked on an ad and no, I'm not interested in the Yemen crisis, to be honest. So that we made it really, really obvious. Um, but but that, was, that was it. Questions? It's lunchtime. <laughs> no.
No, no questions. It's lunch time. I'm going to be outside. So, thanks. Um, just to say, we do have a competition this week because it's N10 as well. If you want to enter it, you can either see us at the booth here, N10, or just give me a business card and we'll put you into the, the draw for a brand new VR headset as well. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your food.